Hey everyone, so this is just going to be a quick tutorial on how to do repeated measures ANOVA, factorial ANOVA, and mixed model ANOVAs using JASP. So let's get right into it. So here we are in JASP, and the first thing I'm going to do is open up our data file called coretemp rmwide.csv. What we see is this is our core temperature as people are cycling for various amounts of time on a stationary bicycle. So each subject gets their own row, and each time that we take their temperature gets its own column. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on ANOVA, and we're going to select Repeated Measures ANOVA. And that opens up the window like this. Now, we're going to call our Repeated Measures Factor 1. I'm going to click on it and just rename it Time. And then we're going to define each of the levels. So we have Time 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, and 90. So I'm just going to give it those numbers, 0, 15, 30, 45, enter, 60, enter, 90, enter. Now what we can see here is it's asking for the variable that goes into each of these, uh, that's matched up with each of these factors. So I'm going to select all of these by using shift and shift them into the box down here. What we see is it outputs an ANOVA right away for us. And we get a mean squared, an F ratio, our F ratio of 49.271, and P less than 001. Now, I can scroll down and ask for a few more pieces of information. For example, descriptive statistics, that gives me my means. Estimates of effect size, in this case, eta squared, partial eta squared basically the same thing. I'm going to click on assumption checks and scroll down and ask for sphericity checks. And what we see is that we have violated our assumption of sphericity. Therefore, we're going to use a greenhouse geyser corrected value based on the fact that greenhouse geyser epsilon here is less than 0.75. If it was greater than 0.75, it might be a little too conservative and we might want to consider using the Winfeld correction. But it's not less, it is less than 0.75, therefore we're going to use the greenhouse geyser correction and I'm going to click on that. So what we see is it doesn't make any difference really in the end, it just changes the degrees of freedom that we are dividing by here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to select some descriptive plots. I want to see what my data looks like. So if I select time and put it on the horizontal axis, we see that I get this increase, give some error bars as well. Doesn't seem to make much difference, but I get an increase as time goes on in terms of core temperature. So that's pretty interesting. So I know that there's a difference in here somewhere based on my p-value being less than 001, but I'd like to know which, which value is different than which other value. In order to do that, I'm going to select post hoc tests. Post hoc tests for time, and we can do a couple of, we can select a couple of different corrections, Bonferroni or home Bonferroni. Now, if I look at my differences, I see that time zero is different than all the other times. I can also look at time 15 and see which one it is different from. It is different than time 45, time 60, and time 90. And time 30 is different than only time 90. Time 45 is not different than 60 or 90, and 60 is not different than 90. So this gives me all of the different possible pairwise comparisons. So that's pretty much it. 
for being able to do a repeated measures ANOVA in JASP. So the next thing we're going to do is go through how to do a factorial ANOVA using JASP. So in this case, we're going to use the file called beergoggles.csv. So let's open up that file. Okay, so we see that we've got our file called beergoggles.csv. So what this data set shows is an experiment where people were asked to rate the attractiveness of a pool of photos. And the pool of photos was either of an attractive group of people or unattractive group of people. And people were split into three groups as to whether they had zero alcohol, two drinks, or four drinks before asking to rate the attractiveness of the photos. We're going to see if there's a difference in the ratings of attractiveness depending on how many drinks you've had and whether or not the face belonged to an attractive group or unattractive group. So we're going to select ANOVA and we're just going to click on ANOVA. We're going to select attractiveness as our dependent variable. And we're going to select face type and alcohol as our fixed factors. But what we see here is that alcohol should actually be a categorical variable. So I'm going to go back into the data and just change its type to be a nominal data type. So now we see that we've got nominal data type that's categorical versus this scalar value. So if I go back into ANOVA and we look, we're going to select attractiveness with face type and alcohol as fixed factors. We're going to select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size using partial eta squared. And then we'll do assumption checks asking for, we'll ask for homogeneity tests. Okay. So first of all, our assumption check of the homogeneity of variance shows that we don't have a problem. It's P is 0.625, so we're good. Next, we look at our ANOVA table. What we see is that face type was significant. P is less than 001. Alcohol was significant. So there was a difference somewhere between none and four drinks of alcohol. And there was an interaction, face type by alcohol interaction. So we're going to look at the data and see what that looks like. So we'll go and scroll down to descriptives plots. And I'm going to click on face type for separate lines and alcohol on the horizontal axis and scroll down. So if we look at this data, it appears that here, the attractive group were rated similarly and quite high, 6.5 roughly, regardless of the amount of alcohol. Whereas faces in the unattractive group of photos were rated relatively unattractive in comparison to the attractive group when there was zero drinks, but very similarly attractive to the attractive group when people had had four drinks, which is interesting. So let's see if we can do some post hoc tests and determine what values are different than what. So if I select post hoc tests, I'm going to select face type and alcohol, holding shift down and face type by alcohol. And then I'm going to do some different corrections. Let's select Tukey and Bonferroni and scroll down. What we see is we get post hoc tests for both the main effects for face type and we see that these are different, but we know that was different already. For alcohol, zero drinks, are they different than two drinks? No, zero drinks is different than four drinks as a main effect. But remember, that depends on the other factor. Zero drinks was not different than four drinks for the attractive group. It was only different than four drinks for the unattractive. 
And we can see that in our table at the bottom. We see attractive with zero drinks and unattractive with zero drinks were significantly different. Unattractive at zero drinks now was not different than unattractive photos at two drinks, but it was different than unattractive photos with four drinks. So what that shows us is that this point here was significantly different than this point up here in the unattractive group. In the attractive, none were different. Zero was not different than two, and zero was not different than four. Okay, so that gives us a good idea of how to do a factorial ANOVA. So let's go on and do a repeated measures mixed ANOVA, and that's where we've got separate groups and repeated measures within those groups. What we're going to do is open up core temp mixed wide.csv. Okay, so in this data set, it's similar to the first data set that we had gone through, where we see core temperature as a function of how long you've been doing stationary cycling. But now we've got two groups as well. We've got males and females. So the way we're going to do this ANOVA is by using the repeated measures function again. So we go into ANOVA, repeated measures, ANOVA. Now, my repeated measures factor, similar to just the simple repeat measures, is time. And I'm going to give it its various levels. Zero, 15, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And I'm going to put those variables in as these factors here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select sex as a between subject factor. I'm going to select descriptive statistics and estimates of effect size using partial at a squared. Now, if we look at our ANOVA table, what we see is we've got a main effect of time, P is less than 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. We've got a main effect of sex in our between subjects effect where P is less than 0, 0, 1. And we've got a time by sex interaction where P is less than 0, 0.001. So we want to investigate what the data looks like. So the first thing we might want to do is go down to our descriptive plots and let's plot time on the horizontal axis and sex as separate lines. When we scroll down, we see that it looks like both sort of increase with time, but females much less so. So what we can do is we can do post hoc tests to determine what values are different than what other values. So I'm going to select time, sex, and sex by time. So hold down shift to select them all. And I'm going to just select Holm and Bonferroni. And what we see is this will give us our post hoc tests on the main effect of time, post hoc comparisons for sex, but there's only one, so we know what's different. It's the post hoc comparisons on the interaction that we're interested in. Now, you can go through here and find which ones are different than which other ones using Bonferroni or Holm correction. So, for example, if we look at females at time zero are different than females at time 30, time 45, time 60, and time 90, but not at time 15. Males at time zero are different than males at time 15, 30, 45, 60, and 90, so at all times. And then you could also look at whether there are differences between males and females at a particular time. So females at zero and males at time zero, not significantly different. At time 15, are females different than males at time 15? 
Yes, they are. And you can go through and look at all of the different significant comparisons. Okay. So, hopefully, that gives you a good idea of how to do repeated measures ANOVAs, factorial ANOVAs, and mixed model ANOVAs using JASP.